Mercedes is in deep trouble. This is what we conclude after we witness the first race in Bahrain. Toto Wolff acknowledged that Mercedes is in a dire situation in which he feels hopeless. Hamilton added that they are going backwards and have many, many problems. Russell even went as far to state that they can hand Red Bull the title already, as he believes they will win every single race. But where did it go wrong? In this video, I will dive deep into the data collected by various sources. Where in the race did it go wrong? Why wasn't Hamilton able to pass Sainz? What problems did Hamilton call out after the race? And moreover, what's next for the German-British formation? Watch till the end to find out. Hamilton crossed the finish line on P5 with a gap of over 50 seconds to race winner Verstappen. Bahrain confirmed that all rumors and expectations made after the testing days were true. No one was sandbagging. Mercedes did build a non-competitive car, or at least not competitive enough to fight for race wins, and Red Bull is the team to beat. But with the race finally over and the data coming in, it also becomes very clear where the big problems of Mercedes lie. This time, it is not top speed that is the issue. When I was watching the race, I was somewhat surprised by the top speed of the Mercedes-powered cars. Especially Hamilton possessed great top speed, which made it difficult initially for Alonso to pass. No, from my point of view, both Mercedes drivers had difficulty with traction, tire degradation, and overall grip in corners. These problems become even more visible when we look at the average pace disadvantage per lap to Red Bull. A shocking result shows up. On average, Mercedes was 0.877 seconds per lap slower than Red Bull. This shortcoming was mainly due to Sector 2, which saw most slow speed corners and which required great traction and mechanical grip. The lack of grip became even more evident as Alonso passed Hamilton with the old switcheroo in Turn 10. However, the real attack already started before that. The Aston Martin had way more grip and traction coming out of the first and second corner. This, in combination with the DRS between corner 3 and 4, allowed Alonso to be right on the tail of the Mercedes of Hamilton. Due to the new regulations, the outwash of the cars, or so-called dirty air, is way less than with previous generation cars. This allowed Alonso to remain close in Sector 2, which happened to be the weakest part of the track for Hamilton and Russell. What happened next was some great racing between two amazing drivers. But what should worry Mercedes is how Alonso was able to get on the brakes so much later than Hamilton, rotate the car, and get on the throttle earlier as well. This allowed Alonso to go side by side with Hamilton between corner 8 and 9 before making a spectacular dive in turn 10. What happened next surprised me as Hamilton was able to stay with Alonso for a couple laps due to his straight line speed advantage. However, it became clear that the Aston Martin was a step too big, something that was acknowledged by a visibly disappointed Total Wolf. There is nothing positive we can get out of this race. Red Bull is on a different planet. Aston Martin probably has the quickest car. This is a true wake-up call for us. However, Hamilton also couldn't take advantage of a struggling Carlos Sainz, who at one point wasn't sure if he was going to make the finish on his set of hard tires. Although Hamilton definitely came close a couple of times and put pressure on the Scuderia, he had to back off after his tires started to degrade, and an unleashed stroll at that point of the race was quickly approaching. Bahrain is notorious for its scruffy asphalt, which makes drivers go through their tires quickly. In this great chart created by F1 Data Analysis, it becomes very clear how quick Mercedes went through their tires. On the left side, we see the fuel-corrected lap times on the soft tires, whereas on the right, we see their fuel-corrected lap times on the hards. What becomes evident is how quickly the lap times of Mercedes went up on the soft tires. In 15 lap times, their lap times took on average 2.5 seconds longer than when they started the race. This is in great contrast to Red Bull, who only lost one second of lap time in 17 laps. Due to their tire degradation, they were the fourth fastest team on the soft tires. Again, these times are fuel adjusted, meaning that the improvement in pace due to a lighter car has been taken out of the equation to truly compare lap times. Now, when we look at the hard tire times, we see that Mercedes was the third quickest car behind Red Bull and Aston Martin. But why was the tire degradation higher than that of Red Bull and Aston Martin? An easy answer can be given by the setup of the cars. Both Aston Martin and Red Bull opted to drive with more downforce, which would give them more speed in corners, but make them somewhat loose out on the straights. 
The Ferraris and Mercedes cars were superior on the straights, but their lack of downforce put more load on the tires when going through Sector 2. The offset of a lower downforce setup is the increase in tire degradation. When you look closely at the onboard cameras of Hamilton, you can see how unresponsive his car was, which is something he will talk about later. However, not all can be explained by a different setup, which is something Hamilton also acknowledges. In an interview with F1.com, he said, I was sliding around. I had so much understeer at the beginning. I took so much wing out. I couldn't get around some of the corners, and I just couldn't keep up with the guys ahead. My middle stint was good, and then at the end I was so close to catching Carlos, but it wasn't good enough. In another interview with Sky Sports, he said, Funny enough, I am really happy with the race. It went much better than in qualifying. I am content with my achievement, and the team did an amazing job with the pit stops. Unfortunately, the car is just too slow, as we miss a lot of downforce. We need to do our best to find extra downforce. Everything that is in the wind tunnel, we need it now. The pace Red Bull showed has been phenomenal. As far as the others around us, we can overtake them at one point. But whereas Hamilton is still positive Mercedes can fight back, Toto Wolff isn't so sure about that. We miss pace. Both drivers need to push to stay with, and that is bad for the tires. Red Bull is just on another planet. This was one of our worst races. Not good at all. Red Bull's dominance reminds me of our best years when we were a second a lap quicker than everyone, said a frustrated Wolf. I am not going to lie. With the budget cap and restrictions in CFD and wind tunnel time, it will take a tremendous effort to close the gap with Red Bull or even become the second team. However, as we have seen last year, Mercedes is capable of bringing the appropriate updates to come closer. So if we remain positive, what can Mercedes do to close the gap, and how long will it take? Let's listen to Trackside Engineering Director of Mercedes, Andrew Shovlin. It was an extremely difficult Sunday. The gap to Red Bull is painful, and now we also have Ferrari and Aston Martin ahead of us. It is clear that we have much work to do. We have to come up with a plan in order to find performance. It is clear that we lack grip, and on a track with high tire degradation like Bahrain, it became impossible for our drivers to attack the drivers in front. But on a positive note, it is promising to see how the team works together and how well both drivers work together. Unfortunately, this is the second year that we start with a backlash, which is totally unacceptable. That things are far from ideal for Mercedes is an understatement, but what is the most difficult question is how to move forward. As we could hear from Shovlin, there is no predetermined plan for how to develop this car. Should they continue with the Zero Side Pod concept, or should they finally let go? Although it was already announced by the team that they are going to introduce new bodywork soon, it is far from clear whether they will be able to close the gap with Red Bull. Whereas last year their biggest problem was porpoising and getting that under control, they now have to make a calculation whether their car philosophy has the right potential to further develop the car. With limited resources and stable rules, it becomes more and more difficult to close the gap. Do you think Mercedes should ban their Zero Side Pod concept? What did you think of the first race? Do you understand Hamilton's frustration? Let me know in the comments below.